Arma virumque cano, Troiae qui primo saboris, Italiam, fato profugus la vinia que venet litora, multui let teris iactatus et alto, vi superum saevae memorem iunone sobiram, multa coquet bello passus dum conderet urbem, inferet que deos latio, genus unde latinum, albanique patres, at qual tae moenia Romae. Thus begins the Aeneid, the great epic that embodies all that is Roman. As the author Virgil tells the story of Aeneas, the mythological progenitor of Rome, he glorifies the emerging Roman culture with elevated language and ambitious craft. However, although the Aeneid is predominantly studied as a supreme work of art, it is also a historical artifact that defines the national character of Rome. In his lifetime, Virgil witnessed the political unrest that eventually led to the dissolution of the Republic. When he was born in 70 BC, Pompey and Crassus had just begun their consulship, giving them the imperium, or ultimate political and military power. Ten years later, by sheer force of personality, Julius Caesar joined them to form the first triumvirate. After Crassus was killed by the Parthians in 53 BC, Caesar initiated a series of civil wars to seize control of Rome. He crossed the Rubicon into Italy in 49 BC, and he eventually defeated Pompey in Greece the next year. However, his victory was short-lived. When he attempted to become dictator, his opponents assassinated him. After the last member of the First Triumvirate had been killed, there was no leader of the Republic, which led to more civil war. History then repeats itself with a second triumvirate emerging from the upheaval. Octavian, Mark Antony, and Lepidus joined forces in 43 BC, but Lepidus soon dropped out of the picture, leaving Octavian and Antony to vie for control of Rome through even more war. The civil wars ultimately ended with the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, in which Octavian triumphed. Antony committed suicide the next year, and Octavian reunited the empire under his uncontested rule. In 27 BC, Octavian assumed the title of Augustus, meaning revered one, and declared the great Pax Romana, the Roman peace. He commissioned Virgil to write a great epic celebrating his triumphs, and Virgil responded with the Aeneid. Yeah, the Aeneid is the story of the Trojan hero Aeneas, who survives the fall of Troy, wanders the Mediterranean for years, looking for a home, in fact, looking for the origins of uh, his race. And eventually he finds that home in Italy, he fights a war, and founds a settlement which will give rise to the city of Rome. That's the story of the Aeneid. But the Aeneid is not just a story. It is also, among other things, a record of events from Roman history. For example, in Book I, when Jupiter reassures his daughter Venus of Rome's future, he tells her of the closing of the gates of war during Augustus's Pax Romana. And the gates of harsh war will be closed by iron beams and hinges. Impious fury, looking horrid with a bloody face, sits behind the gates with his savage weapons, his wrists tied behind his back with one hundred brazen knots. The gates of war to which Jupiter refers were, in fact, physical doors. In his history, Numa Pompilius, the ancient Roman historian Plutarch, describes their symbolism as follows. Janus' temple at Rome has two gates, which they call the gates of war, because they stand open in the time of war and shut in the times of peace, of which the latter there was very seldom an example. When Augustus closed them in 27 BC, it was the first time in 208 years. In writing this scene, Virgil is in effect chronicling history, not just creating fiction. With the closing of the gates of war, as elsewhere in the Aeneid, Virgil celebrates peace and Augustus's great accomplishments, but he is still conscious of the tragedies required to achieve this triumph. He personally saw the fall of his government and the loss of the Republic. The Aeneid is largely about the sacrifices required for Rome's greatness. Aeneas must lose his wife, 
his father, and even his home nation in order to plant the seeds of Rome, an empire he will never live to see. When he washes up on the shores of Africa, it seems as though he has found a happy new life with Queen Dido of newly founded Carthage. She is very much in love with him, and he joins her in erecting her city. However, he cannot stay. The god Mercury reminds him that it is his duty to continue his mission, and so he reluctantly leaves her behind without telling her beforehand. Dido, heartbroken, curses him and his descendants, swearing eternal enmity between their cities before finally killing herself. It's a moment of terrible grief for Aeneas, uh, the hero, but it anticipates, uh, it's a tragic moment for Aeneas and Dido, but it anticipates uh, some of Rome's you know, finest achievements, most heroic, uh, triumphant uh, achievements. The story of Dido and Aeneas anticipates the great wars between Carthage and Rome. Between 264 BC and 146 BC, the two nations battled for dominance in the Punic Wars. The First Punic War ended in 241 BC with Rome's victory at sea. In the Second and most monumental war, Hannibal led the Carthaginian army to Italy through mainland Europe instead of the guarded Mediterranean. His forces would have won, except that Roman general Scipio marched on Africa, forcing Hannibal to abandon his attack in order to defend Carthage. The two armies faced off at Zama in 202 BC, and while Hannibal had superior infantry and at times seemed to be winning, Scipio's cavalry carried the day. After this battle at Zama, Carthage was no longer a threat, so that the Third Punic War was no challenge for Rome. When it ended in 146 BC, Carthage was completely destroyed, and Rome's dominance over the known world was uncontested. Rome's historical triumph was dependent on the tragic elimination of its rival, Carthage, just as Aeneas's triumphant founding of Rome was impossible without his tragic abandonment of Dido. In the story of Dido and Aeneas, then, Virgil offers a psychologically gratifying explanation for the enmity between Carthage and Rome. In this way, even the fiction is telling history. The Aeneid characterizes the Roman spirit as well as retelling the country's history. It is the great Roman national epic. And as soon as it was finished, uh, it became a classic immediately began to be taught in all of the schools, and it's remained that sort of classic uh, all of these uh, centuries, millennia now. The Aeneid's significance extends far beyond ancient Rome. While it is a quintessentially Roman epic, it has also secured a permanent birth in the literary canon, a testament to its universality. The appeal of the Aeneid is in the truth it reveals about the nature of triumph. Although it is tempting to forget the sacrifices made to assure us our privileges, the Aeneid reminds us that all triumphs rise from tragedies. Perhaps Virgil said it best. Tantai molis erat Romanam condere gentem. So great was the burden of founding Rome.